This is Mario Kart Double Dash, and for a decade and a half, it was known as one of the most polished games in the Mario Kart franchise. True. Most entries in the series are loaded with game-breaking shortcuts. 64 is famous for its large skips. Wii has a faulty checkpoint system. Super Circuit is perhaps more broken than any other. These games all have healthy time trial competition, and both non-shortcut and shortcut world records that have been tracked for many years. But then, there's Mario Kart Double Dash. Immediately upon its release in 2003, a shortcut was found on Waluigi Stadium. And for the next 15 years, that was it. Double Dash has always had a competitive time trial scene, but it's been nearly exclusively non-shortcut racing. With one exception, the developers have managed to create a shortcut-free game. For years, Double Dash's speedrun scene grew, as players mastered its racing mechanics and optimized non-shortcut races. But all of a sudden, in 2018, Double Dash's reputation as a shortcut-free game was put on its head. Oh shit! A game that was almost completely void of any glitches quickly became one of the most broken in the franchise. This is the story of the Mario Kart Double Dash Shortcut Revolution. I always knew that cart was really good, but I never wanted to use it because it's kind of scary. First off, what is a shortcut? Well, to count as an official shortcut in the Mario Kart time trial community, it not only has to save time, but also be unintended by the developers. Hmm. For instance, the jump at the start of Yoshi Circuit doesn't count as a shortcut since it was intentionally built into the course. That's crazy, you can just Double that. Dash came out in November 2003. We don't know who discovered it, and it's unknown exactly when it was found, but by the end of 2003, a shortcut had been discovered. And for the next 15 years, it would remain the only shortcut in the game. Mm. This is Waluigi Stadium. About two-thirds of the way through a lap, you can drive off this slope and hit into the fence with enough speed to get thrown into the air. If you make it high enough, Lakitu thinks you fell off from this bridge, which is right before the finish line. Oh shit! So he picks you up and places you down there. It saves just under two seconds per lap and can be performed on all three laps. While it's unclear exactly when this trick was discovered, it's known to have existed within a month and a half of the game's release. And quickly, there was discussion on the Double Dash forums over whether or not shortcut times should be put on the website. Ultimately, the community decided that since the shortcut was one of a kind, it wouldn't be tracked on the website. What? So, the players page contained a space for non-shortcut records on every track, but nothing for Waluigi Stadium shortcut. Still, some players chose to drive shortcut races anyway. Records began to be set in December 2003, but video proof was much less strict back then, even more so for an unofficial category not on the main website. However, one three-lap video from back then still exists, a run from 2004 by Ipusen, and yep, it looks like it's from 2004 alright. The biggest strategy he used was executing frequent mini-turbos. Hmm. By starting a drift with R, moving the stick in the opposite direction and back to neutral twice, and then releasing R, you get a short boost of speed. Oh, mini-turbos are key to getting fast times, and Ipusen performed them constantly through his three laps. He also did the shortcut on the right slope instead of the left, which was slower but likely a bit easier. The biggest driving technique discovered was A-Tech, first seen in runs from 2004 but expanded upon by JSX in February 2006. If you release Accelerate between mini-turbos, the cart sways back and forth less, saving fractions of a second as you're able to take straighter lines and more direct paths forward. 
Thanks to that and other small driving optimizations, the record still sees competition to this day, with the most recent world records being set in late June 2022. But it all started back in 2003. Double Dash was brand new. There is reason to believe that this shortcut was just the beginning, and that in a few short years, there would be skips all over. That's how it went for previous games in the franchise, and that appeared to be happening in Double Dash just the same. But instead, this game's history took a different path. God, it's so weird when people in chat say that they were born, like, after the GameCube. God, that's just so weird for me to see, chat. I'm sorry. Like, maybe it's just so weird to see. Like, you guys didn't grow up with the GameCube. Your first console was, like, the Wii. Like, t that's crazy to me, man. It makes me feel so old. I feel so old when you guys talk like that. Like, I was born in 2004. And the thing is, you're not even that young. Like, that's the crazy part. What do you, what do you, if you're, you're 16, 17? 18? Bro, what? I can't even count, I'm so old. Years passed, still no new shortcuts. The game's time trial scene grew bigger and bigger, and by the mid-2000s it was vibrant, with top players from all over the world. But other than the occasional Waluigi Stadium race, the competition was exclusively non-shortcut. The focus was on optimizing every last millisecond from the 16 courses, improving lines, performing more mini-turbos, and implementing A-Tech. By 2008, Mario Kart Wii was released, and within months, that game had massive ultra shortcuts breaking its tracks. Mario Kart doubled. You guys really liked Mario Kart Wii. I I be real with you, chat. I I didn't like it that much. I I I, I like Double Dash a lot more. I know I know people are gonna hate that opinion. I like Double Dash more. Dash, several years older, still had just one shortcut. The years continued to pass, and suddenly, five years turned into ten. Still, there was nothing new. Mario Kart Double Dash was an unbreakable game, and that's all there was to it. In over a decade of searching, absolutely nothing had been found. Well, okay. There was one thing. In Mario Kart Double Dash, courses are what surrounded by invisible planes that are nicknamed Lakitu Zones. When you fall off a track and collide with one of these zones, that's Lakitu's cue to pick you up and drop you back on the track. But this system isn't perfect. Suppose you fall off and manage to not hit a Lakitu Zone. What happens? Well. In that case, you've officially made it out of bounds, and Lakitu still picks you up, but he sets you back somewhere a bit different. No matter where you go out of bounds, Lakitu sets you just behind the finish line. Since you never hit a Lakitu zone, the game doesn't know where to put you, and sets you down right at the end of the course. Unfortunately, crossing the finish line doesn't count a lap. But at the very least, this did provide some intrigue. If uh. players could somehow figure out a way to get a lap to count, warping straight to the finish line would save massive time. Out of bounds mechanics were discovered shortly after the game's release, but for many years it wasn't paid much attention. Despite its promising nature, the simple fact was that without getting the lap to count, it wasn't really a useful trick. But still, for the next 15 years, players wondered if maybe there was something that could be done with it. Some way that the lap could count and have a shortcut be discovered. And then 2018 came around. The champion of Mario Kart Double Dash at that point was named Goomba, and in August, he saw this random guy's video on Mario Kart Wii. And in it, 
he saw that game's community figure out the checkpoint system and use it to break courses and create massive shortcuts. Meanwhile, in 15 years of Double Dash, its checkpoint system had yet to be solved. But was it possible? Could a lap count when most Yo, of the driving cool. is skipped? Like, well, well Goomba rate? finally- Will, I'm gonna say this about Donda right fucking now, all right? You were on something, you are on something. You're on, you were on something, you're crazy bitch. You are on something, dude. I fucking love what you're doing with Donda. You are fucking killing it. Donda, Donda, no, no, no Donna. You're fucking killing it, Will. You're fucking killing it. I'm so glad you're finally doing shit that like, like, bro, you and like Seer, like you, you excel in, man. You're so good. I'm glad you're doing shit, man. Keep it up, Will. I'm so, I'm actually so fucking proud of you. I'm you finally got a fucking show, man. Mia called you out, <laughs> okay? And Rosie, that's a new video. Like easy clap. We're watching uh the hidden shortcuts of Mario Kart da Double Dash. It's really good. So we just learned that. I'll keep you guys updated. Um, they were trying to find shortcuts. They uh couldn't really find any shortcuts for about ten years, and then some guy who watched. Summoning Salt's video is like, wait a minute, maybe I can try to figure it out. And now they're trying to figure it out. He decided enough was enough. He began a Thank deep you, dive into the inner I'm proud workings of, I'm actually of the really game, proud of you. attempting to figure out exactly what conditions had to be met for a lap to count. And oh yeah, chat, if you haven't seen it, by the way, Will does a show now, it's every Thursday. So every Thursday, I'm, I'm all fine with shouting it out, because guess what, it's my day off. He does a show, uh, it's after Austin's show, watch it. It's, it's, uh, Donna. It's actually really fucking good. Over the course of several months, with the contributions of community members like Lothjohn and Tarsa, Mario Kart Double Dash's code was cracked. There are three conditions that must be met for a lap to count in Mario Kart Double Dash. Condition 1. You must start the lap in Checkpoint Zero, the first checkpoint on the map. Right. Each course in the game is broken up into invisible checkpoints, which are used to help keep track of how far you've driven. This condition is pretty straightforward. For a new lap to start, you must be touching the first checkpoint of the course. Condition 2. You must have credit for driving through every checkpoint. Checkpoint bit counters in the game keep track of whether or not you've touched any given checkpoint during a lap. If you haven't, it's set to zero, and if you have, it's set to one. Mm. In order for a lap to count, every checkpoint must have a bit counter set to one, Makes sense. which would intuitively mean that you're not allowed to skip driving through any checkpoints. However, on Waluigi Stadium, you skip several when performing the shortcut. Why does the lap still count? Well, that's because there's a workaround. If you hit a Lakitu zone and get picked up, you automatically get credit for every checkpoint between where you got picked up and where you were placed down. It's known as a lack hop, and is the only way around having to touch every single checkpoint. And finally, condition 3. Your race completion must be greater than your number of laps completed. Double Dash has an internal counter called race completion that starts at zero and gradually increases as you drive around the course. Once you complete a lap, it hits one and then continues counting up again. The reason this matters is because of a failsafe the developers put into the game, the 50% rule. If your race completion ever jumps up by 50% or more, it rounds down and you lose credit for all you've driven through the lap. Oh, shit. So if you go out of bounds 30% of the way through a track, then are warped to the finish line, your race completion is set to just below zero. Since this is less than the zero laps that you've completed, you won't get credit for a lap. Yo, Together, the five. these three rules were designed to prevent any okay. shortcuts from existing in Mario Kart Double Dash. And for 15 years, they worked nearly flawlessly. Goomba hadn't figured this all out by late 2018, but he had a general understanding of how it worked. Now, he had to put it all together somewhere, and the course he looked at was Mushroom Bridge. He had to not only get credit for driving through all the checkpoints, but also avoid cutting out more than 50% of the course at the time. It was going to have to be a two-step process.
God, those that to get checkpoint nuts. credits, he took the whack hop mechanic to the next level. By going on the grass just before the finish line, you can use a mushroom and release break at the last moment to fly forward and hit a Lakitu zone. This zone is in front of the finish line, but because of where you hopped off, you're put back just before the finish line. And since you get credit for all checkpoints between where you're picked up and where you're set down, you get credit for every checkpoint on the course. That was step one. The next step was to get race completion for the lap to count. Mm. Together with Lothchon, Goomba took a look at the bridge right before the start. By precisely jumping off at about 87% completion, what? you can hit the wall on the other side at about 37%. Which makes This Black is a decrease of only 50%, so it's valid as far as the game is concerned. You then respawn at 85%, once again less than 50%, and have therefore earned race completion for an entire lap. I was completely wrong. So, it was possible to do a lap hop to get checkpoints, then turn around and quickly do a bridge hop to get race completion. That satisfies both conditions 2 and 3. So if you drive over the finish line to enter the first checkpoint box, a lap counts. On September 15th, 2018, Double Dash's first shortcut in 15 years was born. Goomba's first three-lap record with video clocked in at 115.639, about two and a half seconds ahead of the non-shortcut record. He drove the first lap normally, then performed a shortcut on lap two, and finished with a normal lap three. Doing the shortcut more than once per race wasn't possible, as you needed a mushroom for the lack hop, and your mushrooms are taken away when picked up by Lakitu. Over the following few days, Goomba and a runner named J98 would trade the record down to a 114, each time doing the shortcut once and driving two laps normally. However, Goomba then figured out it was possible to do the lack hop without a mushroom. By going on the pillar next to the bridge, you have sufficient height that you can bounce off the ground and make it far enough without using Damn, a mushroom. Damn, that's crazy! This not only was faster than the old method, but also meant that, theoretically, the shortcut could now be done more than once in a race. However, doing the bridge jump once was hard enough. Doing it twice in a row seemed nearly out of the question. Later in September, J98 and Goomba each did more mushroom bridge attempts, lowering the record to 111. But still, nobody was able to get the shortcut more than once in a race. Players focused their efforts elsewhere, and the task of hitting two shortcuts was just too daunting. Mm. For over a year, that's where the record stood. But in March 2020, someone began playing Mushroom Bridge Shortcut. Only this time, it wasn't Goomba or J98. It was a relative newcomer to the game, one who is ranked outside of the top 40, but he was ready to try and take down a world record. His name simply was I Mathy. Mathy didn't have the driving skills of a world champion like Goomba. That meant that without anything new, his 111 was going to be awfully tough to beat. But he had one other option he could go for two shortcuts in the same race. It had never successfully been pulled off before, but even with worse driving, it could be enough to beat Goomba. Mathy got to work grinding attempts, it sound like getting as good as he could at the bridge hop and lack hop. And on March 2nd, 2020, he had this attempt. Okay, yeah, it worked. Nice. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Alright, don't freaking lose this. Oh my god! Yo. Damn! It's so bad! But that's it. That's it. Sub 111. Let's go. A new record by less than a tenth of a second. Not to be outdone, world champion Goomba came back. And over oh, the next few days, Goomba. the two of them traded world records. 
A few days. However, over the next several months, Matthew would pull ahead. Holy shit. She was able to line up faster for the Black Hop and improved his driving around the course. Yeah, let's fucking go, dude. 107, 325. So Damn, now, a 1 out of 3 shortcut run had been optimized. A 2 out of 3 shortcut run had been optimized. There was only one thing left to do. Hit the shortcut on all three laps. I love the music with that. A 3 out of 3 run was originally thought to be slower, since you could quickly line up for a lack hop after driving a lap normally. However, in February 2022, Matthew tested with save states and confirmed that, if performed optimally enough, a 3 out of 3 shortcut run would indeed save time. But actually hitting it was another story. Matthew had gotten quite good at executing the lack hop and bridge hop over the years, but he would need to do three of each in a row. That's six consecutive difficult tricks. It could take a while to grind this out. But just four days later, Matthew got himself What's on with the this card run. Chat? Why would he choose this card? <sighs> go. Let's go. This definitely works. Pog. Pogius. Pog. He's farming while getting world records. What a god. Let's go. Uh, here we go. This guy's a better streamer than me. Damn, that's so fast. Please. Oh, come on. Ah, 104. He was a bit upset because he wanted a 103, not a 104. He had the farm, but though. history that's why. had still been made. This 104.363, the world's first 3 out of 3 run, is still the record today. Damn! But let's not get ahead of ourselves. As far as shortcut discoveries are concerned, we're still in 2018. And at this point, the only time trial shortcuts in the game were Waluigi Stadium from 2003 and Mushroom Bridge from 2018. But just a month later, thanks to a better understanding of how checkpoints worked, Double Dash's third time trial shortcut would be discovered. Welcome to Bowser's Castle. Where the music? Oh, oh, oh. oh. Bowser's Castle was quickly singled out as a prime candidate for a shortcut. For sure, for sure. The reason why is because of the balcony. About 40% of the way through a lap on Bowser's Castle, you drive on a balcony directly adjacent to the finish line. Drive Whoa. 60%, and you're higher up on the same balcony. It seemed natural that with so many regions being so close together, you could somehow get credit for being further in the lap than you really were. But for a while, it didn't seem to be possible. However, after Mushroom Bridge's discovery, Lothjohn and Goomba looked into Bowser's castle. And thanks to exploiting a specific game mechanic, they figured out how to use the balcony to their advantage. This is the ATEC Hop. As mentioned before, ATEC is when you release the A button between mini turbos to keep a straighter line. That's sick. However, there's a side effect of ATEC. Your cart's nose gets slightly lifted in the air. If you do a mini turbo with ATEC, then perform a sharp turn after releasing A, and then press R and A while your nose is pointed up, your cart hops into the air. What? It's called an ATEC hop, and is the only way to hop in Mario Kart Double Dash. Yo, that's sick! So, after driving half a lap normally, you arrive at the balcony. By performing an ATEC hop in a precise spot off the ledge, your race completion goes from 40% to 60% as you hit the upper balcony checkpoints, to 99% as you hit the finish line checkpoints, and back to 40% as you respawn. It never jumps up by more than 50% at a time, so your race progression increases by a full lap, and you get checkpoint credits upon respawning. This trick would go on to be nicknamed oh the God. flop. 
For laps two so and you three, you can flop of off the ledge, then lap hop to get checkpoint credits for the full lap, and complete the race having driven hardly any of it. Yo! So, Goomba got cool. to work, and managed to hit the shortcut after a few tries on October 10th, 2018. A 209 run, ahead of the non-shortcut record by 7 seconds. Over the following few days, he'd cut down on the number of tries needed to hit it, taking the time down to 126. But on the 14th, Goomba would hit the first ever 3 out of 3, a run with 3 flops and 3 lack hops, and a final time of 106. Yes, dude! <laughs> My god. <laughs> the winner, Tenko. A month oh, later, is. a runner named Rickbick would be the first to cut out a lack hop by hitting the proper checkpoints on the flop. Yo, Rick. That lowered the record to just over a minute. But just five days later, Goomba would return to not only take the record back, but take it under a minute. Mario Kart Double Dash's first ever sub minute world record. Like, yes, dude. Oh my god. 59. Get this guy, Goomba's crazy. And then. Three years would pass. Goomba chose to play other courses in the game, and most other runners had little interest in shortcuts or just couldn't compete with Chad, them. Chad, that looks like the end of it, you know? But then Mathy came along. Huh? At first, he struggled to set any records on Bowser's Castle, but in September 2021, he finally came through with a 58 second run. But what Mathy would do just four weeks later was far more impressive he would discover another shortcut, known today simply as the Big Bounce. And this is why. Yo, that's crazy. The Big Bounce is essentially a larger version of the ATEC hop. Instead of angling your cart's nose up with ATEC, you want to very precisely maneuver your cart along the edge. Oh my By then God. rotating around, your nose is pointed up much higher than it would be from ATEC. You can then use a mushroom and do a more extreme version of the ATEC hop called the extreme hop. By using another mushroom when you land, you perform what's called a shroom bounce and get even more air, enough to hit the Lakitu zone and respawn on the balcony. This saves close to 10 seconds if performed optimally, but adds another layer of difficulty. Still, it didn't take long before Matthew was able to hit it in a run, and lower the record by another 6 seconds. Yo, that guy's seconds. crazy! Yeah! Oh, let's go! <laughs> nice job, dude. Goomba didn't take long to respond, taking another 2 seconds off, mostly via a faster big bounce at the start. That's where the record stood for about 6 months. But in April 2022, Matthew would come back once more and finished off a 49 second world record with one of the most sarcastic celebrations in speedrunning history. Yeah. Oh, wow. Matthew's 49 like second Giga run Chad. stands as the record today. Bowser's Castle has had dramatic record cuts over the years, but without new strategies, Did it shouldn't go very much lower. After Bowser's Castle, it wasn't obvious which course would be next. There were several that had potential, although nothing that could quite be put together. One day in October 2018, Yo, Goomba oh was God. streaming on Twitch and wanted to demonstrate some shortcut theory for his viewers. So he loaded up Mushroom City. Goomba showed his chat that if you could somehow hit this Lakitu zone from the bottom, the game would set you back on top and you'd skip a good Howdy. chunk of the course. What? However, he had tested this before, and the lap didn't count when driving over the finish line. So, he drove forward to show his viewers how a lap wasn't counted. What? What? But that's not supposed to work. Goomba had no idea what had happened, but he quickly figured it out. This part of the course contains both checkpoint boxes 24 and 25. They extend infinitely upwards. If you touch the Lakitu zone in box 25, how he, you how never actually though? leave this box when you respawn, so neither race completion nor the checkpoint bit counter gets updated. If you touch it in box 24, on the other hand, you respawn outside of it, 
so the lap counts as it does on other courses. So that was figured out in October 2018, but this was all just the proof of concept. Goomba had no method of actually touching the Lakitu zone from below. He did car. it before with a moon jump code. So, it remained on the shelf for the next two and a half years. But in March 2021, Mathy solved it again. His method was quite similar to the big bounce on Bowser's Castle. You angle your nose up on a slope, then do an extreme hop, and do a shroom bounce to get enormous yeah, height and Mario touch the lap two zone. As right, long as you on, do so in checkpoint 24, the lap counts. And just like that, the Mushroom City shortcut was born. Yeah, he's dirty. Matthew was the first to set a three lap record on Mushroom City, just hours after the shortcut was discovered. This was quite a difficult trick to hit, and he still needed Holy to drive shit. well enough after for it to be faster than the non shortcut record. But he did. Oh, oh, yeah. 133.369, let's fucking go. I mean, uh. Goomba began doing attempts too, and thanks to a particularly I mean, uh, fast uh, shortcut hit, he beat Mathy and set the record. Yes! Woo! Over the following few weeks. Wait a minute. Oh, never mind. This guy said this test is blocked. I thought this guy, I thought this said imagine, and I'm like, oh my god, it's a Ludwig viewer. Over Never the mind. following few weeks, the two of them would once again get into a world record battle. Matthew came up with a slightly faster way to do the shortcut from the front, and thanks to- Ludwig viewers love Mario Kart Double Dash. Love, well, that's because love plays. To that, plus improved driving afterwards, the record came under a minute 30. But the biggest improvement would be discovered that September when Matthew found that the shroom bounce wasn't needed. If you got your nose in the air enough and did an extreme hop, it was possible to reach the Lakitu zone without using a mushroom. Now, that technically opened the possibility of doing the shortcut more than once in a race, but it was what? an extremely difficult trick, tougher than any other shortcut in the game. Many months passed, and the record remained with just one shortcut out of three. Doing it more than that was just too big of an ask. And then, on June 3rd, 2022, Mathy did this. Oh. oh! Don't do it again to me, Mathy, please. Oh, here it is. Oh. oh! 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 Come on. Oh my god, dude. You're in a world record video. I just did the first two for three Mushroom City glitch. He literally oh, already really? knew that he was in a world yeah, record video. I just have to not shit the bed, lap three now. One twenty. He had done it again. The world's first two out of Casually three shortcut hit on Mushroom City. Records. To this day, it hasn't been replicated. Will a 3 out of 3 ever be done? Maybe one day, but keep in mind how long 2 out of 3 took. For now, a 120.634 is where the record stands. But these 3 lap runs aren't the only types of world records set in Mario Kart Double Dash. The game keeps track of not only your fastest 3 lap race, but also your fastest individual lap on any given course. On the Double Dash Players page, this is called doing a fast lap, or flap for short. So that means it's possible to go to Bowser's castle and do a flop on your flap. I just wanted to say that, but... Does anyone play blackjack? Anyway, flap world records are tracked right alongside three lap records and carry a similar level of prestige. But in 2021, a pair of shortcuts would be found Set a $5,000 challenge for th getting three out of three. Isn't that a lot of money for the speedrunning community? Can't I give like $50 Applebee's gift card and like the whole community will go nuts? 
What if I... Moist did 20k. That's because... What, what do I get out of doing this? Let's, let's, let's get to down the business. Chat, Matty Hill goes live one time. He doesn't think, talk to his friend. He's going to hit this, all right? A clip on LSF. Okay, so I get hate. What else do I get out of this? All right. I'm calling out the my I'm calling out the my I'm calling out the Mario Kart community. If you are able to hit 3 out of 3 on I I don't know the map name. We got to we got to redo it. We got to redo it. Mushroom City. Okay. If you are able to hit three out of three on Mushroom City, they claim it's impossible. They say it can't be done. But if you do it, I'll give a hundred dollars. Found that were slower for a three lap record, but would save time over a flap record. They would become the game's first flap only shortcuts. First up, Discovered in March 2021, we have Luigi Circuit. The shortcut on Luigi oh, Circuit is one of the most clever in the game. Step one is to drive most of a lap normally. Then, before getting credit for the lap, you turn around and go back out to the front of the course. By doing an ATEC hop, it's possible to get on this ledge right in front of the finish line. You then maneuver right next to the zipper, and let's go over the three conditions for a lap to count again. Your checkpoints and race completion are met by driving around the course, which you already did. But the first condition says you have to touch checkpoint zero. This is normally done by just crossing the finish line, but it can also be done by touching it from the other side. So, when you touch the zipper, you enter checkpoint zero and start the lap with about a one second head start. The resulting time save means that you can have an individual lap slightly faster than what you'd normally get. Beyond this, the only optimization is how well you drive the subsequent lap. What? Since so Mathy discovered lap. the ATEC hop in March 2021, he and Goomba have alternated who drove better, trading the record back and forth several times. And at the moment, Goomba holds the record with a 23.390. The other f All right, if you're able to beat Goomba's record on Luigi Circuit, I will give you $8. Flap only shortcut is a little different. Instead of a 23 second lap, we're talking more like 6 or 7 seconds. And this time, we're headed out to the desert. Dry Dry Desert had a lack hop that had been known about for years. If you drive away from the road and cross the finish line as you get picked up by Lakitu, you'll be dropped down behind the finish line with all your checkpoints updated. Unfortunately, this wasn't helpful unless you could somehow gain race completion along with it. And for years, there was no way to do that. However, all the way back in 2003, a player named Scott R did this on Dino Dino Jungle. When a floor is sloped enough in Double Dash, and you drive into it with enough speed while your cart is sideways, it's possible to clip through it. You need to get a bit lucky with your cart's positioning, so it's on one side of the floor one frame and the other side the next. But the key is finding a floor sloped just the right way. It needs to be at the perfect angle so you can actually clip through it. Sort of like this downed pillar on Dry Dry Desert. This particular clip was discovered by Mathy, and since you land oh, out of bounds, you get warped straight to the finish line. 
So you can drive part of a lap, go out of bounds, then drive around again to stack your race completion higher. By then doing a lack hop to finish the lap, you get your checkpoints instantly to start lap 2, and upon crossing the finish line, you have yourself an incredibly short lap. Optimizations have been slim over the years, with just a fraction of a second being shaved off at a time. Mathy and Goomba set most of the records, but famed super circuit runner Rusty How many people are really in this like like scene though? Like is it just three people like on like Skype at night or is there like a whole like It just I, like you know what I mean? What about Russell? Is Russell in it? He set a few records too. This actually isn't the fastest flap record in the game as both Mushroom Bridge and Bowser's Castle have records in the 4 second range. The current record here is 6.437 seconds by Mathy, and it seems that it can only go down by a couple hundredths of a second at most. The key is getting a frame-perfect lap entry, combined with a small bounce when being dropped by Lakitu. But regardless, this record shouldn't be going much lower. That makes it two flap-only shortcuts, and four that can be done on three lap runs. Over the years, many have tried their hand at these shortcuts. Some courses have a leaderboard of a few names, while older ones like Waluigi Stadium have dozens. But there's still one more shortcut to talk about. To this day, only one person has ever pulled it off fast enough. Matty for sure. The player was Mathy, and the course was Wario Coliseum. He's the greatest of all time, Chet. Let's just give it up. Wario Coliseum is a unique course. For one thing, it's the only like course, course in the game where you drive just two laps for the race to be complete. But it's also got many places you can launch yourself off the road, which gave it huge potential for a shortcut. Throughout 2021, out of bounds and lack hop combinations were theorized, yet nothing came to fruition. But one night in June 2021, oh, that was sick. Goomba and Mathy hopped on a call and decided to look together. And over the next 24 hours, the Wario Coliseum shortcut was born. That's cool. First, you drive to around 40% race completion. Then, you fly off the edge of the road, and by using a mushroom to pull your cart down, you avoid touching any other checkpoints and land out of bounds. Oh shit. However, when respawning behind the finish line, the game actually thinks you're on the track below at 55%, so the 50% rule is satisfied. You then drive backwards, do a lack hop to get all checkpoints between where you jumped off and where you went out of bounds, and when you drive forward, a lap counts. Now is all this faster than just driving the lap hours? normally? It actually is, but just barely. Only one person has been able to execute it fast enough to save time over a non shortcut run. Mathy. On June 6, 2021, he did it for the first time, getting a 156.190 that beat the non-shortcut record by 1 100th of a second. Yes, finally! 156.190. Let's go. <sighs> He'd That's follow this bad. up four months later with a 155.735, and then a 155.437 in March 2022. And to this day, those are the only three records that have ever been set on Wario Coliseum. Hmm. Waluigi Stadium, Mushroom Bridge, Bowser's Castle, Mushroom City, Luigi Circuit, Dry Dry Desert, and Wario Coliseum. Those are the seven courses that have been broken by players of Mario Kart Double Dash. There exists an eighth shortcut on Dino Dino Jungle that My hasn't been hit place. fast enough yet. It's similar to Luigi Circuit, where you start a lap from the other end of Checkpoint Zero. A few years ago, Waluigi Stadium was alone. Now, half the courses in the game have a shortcut. Double Dash is going to be played for generations to come, and right now, we're just in a snapshot of its history. But if its past is any indication, players aren't yet done breaking its courses and finding shortcuts. Eight courses have yet to fall victim to a shortcut, but it seems that their days are numbered. More courses will be broken. The only questions are when will it happen, 
and who will be the ones to do it. Maddie, thanks I can't for watching. Half of them. Ah, good fucking video, baby. Ugh. I will gift you 300 subs if you give me a one hour private Discord meeting to pitch OTK content ideas. Bro. Yes, I got you, man. Of course, I got you. Dude, that was a really fucking good video. You guys like that chat?